Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to GEMS 5AM Club. It's early morning and I've just jumped off the train here at uh, Circular Quay Station and look at this magnificent view. It is a glorious view and as I say time and time again, where else can you hop off a train, be in a public space and see this commanding glorious view of uh, Circular Quay, Sydney Harbour. You've got the Opera House over there. You've got the magnificent Sydney Harbour Bridge. The Museum of Contemporary Art. A full moon and uh, a little uh, parkway down there with some blossoming jacaranda trees and just pure magic. Anyway, let's go on a walk and talk. There's a bat flying through there, a fruit bat. Let's go on a walk and talk. I want to talk to you about an awesome book that I read uh, this time last year. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's a website called oh, Best Book Bits and it has almost 500 books with, of different topics um, that have been summarised. So you can basically tap into that website and it's all free of charge and you can have access to the best books in the world um, which have been summarised for you either in written form or verbal form. So there's an audio version that you can listen to and you can just enhance your knowledge and build your, uh, your inventory of, uh, of skills on a daily basis if you wish to. So what I've chosen to do today is do a walk and talk and talk about one of those book summaries that I've read and it's an awesome book summary. It is such a powerful summary because uh, many many years ago I actually went to a seminar hosted by Jim Rowan and he's a magnificent, he's an awesome public speaker very entertaining with uh, many many profound uh, points and uh, you can learn quite a bit from him as well as all the other speakers who uh, who have been doing the circuit over the years anyway let's head off and uh, go for a bit of a, a walk a walk and talk and spend some time together on this overcast um, Tuesday morning but it doesn't matter, we'll bring the sunlight to each other with some empowering messaging and some uh, beautiful views from this beautiful city of Sydney. Anyway, so the book, the book that we're going to uh, talk about today is entitled Have Your Best Year Ever. Have your best year ever. What a title that is, especially in this day and age with uh, the year that we're currently experiencing, COVID-19. But uh, I'm sure when we all look back, we will have learnt a lot uh, from this particular year uh, uh, because COVID-19 uh, lockdown and all the uh, challenges that we face have taught us some valuable lessons about ourselves and also about the people around us. Anyway, let's uh, let's keep on moving and uh, we'll chat away as we're going. So, um, have your best year ever from Jim Rowan. And I've got to tell you, uh, when I look back over this year, I'm sure it's going to be a, an, an awesome year um, and uh, I hope it's the same for you as well. So some of the messages from this book that Jim talks about is, uh, the first one is don't be, don't be cynical. How awesome is that? Don't be cynical because uh, by being cynical, he suggests, it will lock your doors. It will lock your doors to possibility, 
It will lock your, your doors to, uh, to a better world. And um, it's important not to fall into that trap of being cynical. And just as importantly as that, not to hang out with cynical people as well, because they will infect you with their cynicism. He talks about the importance of being a student, a student of life, and to be curious and always to be on the lookout for uh, learning and adding to your knowledge base. He encourages us to be products of our own conclusions. So uh, think, think about your lives, think about the world around you, what's happening, and uh, um, keep your own journals and basically uh, think and be a product of your own conclusions. He encourages us to develop our own philosophies. Study other people, study other philosophies, but build your own philosophy of life. Um, because at the end of the day, we are each authors of our own lives and our own futures, uh, rather than being part of somebody else's plan, be, be uh, an active member and a, a participant in your life. Um, he encourages us to change and improve ourselves because once we change, everything else will follow. Um, he also is big on this as well. He says that uh, you need to uh, focus on yourself, improve yourself, because your outside, your outside is a reflection of your inside. Your outside is a reflection of your inside. Got a photographer over here, so I'm just gonna make sure I don't get in his way. So your outside is a reflection of your inside. So how cool is that? Um, and he makes the awesome point that uh, while God sees you inside out, uh, all other people, all other people see you from the outside in. So you've got to make sure that you uh, have the best possible um, outside to be able to uh, connect and allow people to want to uh, connect with you. He talks about the importance that uh, you can't live on mental candy alone. So uh, just living life looking for uh, pleasures and, uh, and happiness and all of those things are not enough to, uh, to live a fulfilled life. So you need to, uh, to uh, live the full spectrum of life and uh, experience the ups and downs in order to appreciate the good times and to uh, satisfy yourself that you're You've lived a full life. He also talks about writing your own journals, keeping journals, filling books. And this is such a powerful point. He says, create your own library. Have a, uh, a library at home of books, of great books of other people. But more importantly, he says, is have your own library of books that you have written. And what he talks about there is, is journaling. It's so powerful. So the Jim's 5am club that I'm doing is my journal. I'm doing a, a verbal journal every day of things that I've learned and things that I'm passing on. He encourages us to let life touch us. Don't be stiff, don't be boring. Don't be too reserved, too conservative. You've got to go with the flow and let, let life touch you uh, and bring out the best in us. But you know we've got to understand that by allowing life to touch us, potentially it could also hurt us, but uh, we will learn. Allow, allow all of these things to be stepping stones uh, in our lives to allow us to grow and develop and to not hold back because by holding back 
you're basically um, robbing yourself of a, a full, a full, and fulfilling life. Um, he says to l face life with anticipation, to live life and to face life with positive anticipation and positive expectation and not apprehension. How many people do we know who live their lives and uh, are apprehensive? They wake up in the morning and, and say to themselves, oh, what's going to happen to me today? You know, and it's a pity because uh, you know, if you ask yourself that question or if you have that sort of attitude, then your life isn't going to be as uh, spectacular and as fun as what it can be. He also talks about the importance of planning, planning your life, planning your activities, having your own dreams, because if you don't, the warning is that you'll fall victim to other people's plans, other people's dreams, and the last thing you want to do is come to the end of your life and say, well, I didn't do it my way. So you have the power, you have the opportunity to do it now. And the other big point from this book is to keep on asking yourself the question, who am I becoming? Because life is a journey and that journey is all about you. So it's your life and you need to be asking yourself, who are you becoming? And you know, every experience is shaping you. Every ex experience is defining you. So uh, ask yourself the question, what am I becoming? And to welcome, welcome change, welcome uh, experience, welcome everything, welcome problems, because they're all there for a purpose. They're all there. And the easy crowd, crowd will, uh, will not lead you, will not allow you to grow, develop, and become the person who you are uh, meant to be. And let's finish off uh, slowly. He talks about here something very profound and very important. The greatest source of unhappiness is self-unhappiness. So you need to be uh, in control of your happiness. You need to choose to be happy. You need to focus on the good things in your life rather than the bad things in your life in order to generate joy and happiness in your life. He talks about the greatest teacher of character is generosity. So to be generous with your time, with your effort, with your praise, with all of those things to the people around you. And the last thing that he talks about that comes out of this book is to be prepared, don't be lazy, and always have something good to say. Be a source of encouragement to those around you. And, uh, and be the person who uh, uplifts um, them around you rather than being the toxic person who puts people down and makes people feel uncomfortable all the time. Um, and the last one of all is just, she says, mix words with emotion and don't be too casual with your communication. So he's basically saying to live life with passion and to try and be as clear as you can with communication to others around you as well as the way you communicate to yourself. So thank you very much once again for joining me on this Gym's 5am Club. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. And for all of us, when we look back over our lives, 2020 may be, may just be the best year ever in our lives. I know it's going to be my best year ever um, and I'm intent on continuing my gym's 5am clubs. So let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant and let's take a few of these points out of Jim Rowan's book, The Best Year Ever. 
and live a life of, uh, of our design, of our desire, with God's help of course, and to be a source of joy and inspiration and positivity to all of those around us, to share hope, to be hope, and to, uh, to live, learn, and pass it on. Take care everybody. I love being with you, and I love going on a bit of a walk and talk and a volta, and I look forward to coming to you again from another spot in Sydney. Don't know where I'll be later on or tomorrow, but uh, hopefully we can come to you with another empowering message to help us all get through the morning, get through the day, get through the week, and uh, get a winner today on Melbourne Cup. Anyway, take care, yasas, and we'll chat again.